guys, how's it going? Goes over here today, and I'm going to be showing you how to run the subwoofer wires inside your GTI 2011. This could work for other GTIs. I'm just going to show you for this one because it's super easy, and why not? So, in the end, what I'm going to first show you is where I've mounted my amps. I'm mounting them back here, and then I'm going to build a uh, bit of wood, or maybe I'll cut up the foam and glue it in here. I don't know if I'm going to glue or just Velcro. We'll see. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not going to rattle. So once I'm done, I'm going to just do some stuff there, do some stuff over here in front of that. This one's got to be obviously Velcroed because I have a front plate on the front end of this amp. Then we'll put something right here. This is, of course, the four channel. This is the mono block. And um, yeah, this is just all the old equipment for my Mazda that I'm going to incorporate into here. So this is how this goes. Next thing you're going to want to do is go up front, so give me a second, I'll get up front ready. So first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, get behind your deck. It's super easy. You need a panel popper, or you can tape up a flathead screwdriver. I prefer a panel popper because there's a little bit more flex. You just go along the edge here and just move it out. You'll hear it pop as you go along the edge. Just be careful up here. You don't want to break that piece. Although it looks cheap and they probably make it for five cents, they probably would charge you an arm and leg at the dealership. So that comes out after you pop it out. And if you look here, there's four Torx bolts and you're just going to remove them. I believe they're T20s or T15s. I can't remember. But I'm going to remove those so we can get behind our deck. All right, so if you have an aftermarket stereo like this, the next thing you're going to want to do is on the back of your stereo, you're going to see on the radio harness a blue-white wire. Now, I'm going to show you what I did here because I already taped up my RCAs. These are directional RCAs, so i got to be, you know, just careful which way. I already put a piece of tape to know which way they're going. And uh, right here, what you're going to do is take this blue wire, or that's usually what comes in your amp kit, uh, the smaller wire which it uses a remote wire to tell your amps to turn on is you're going to solder that up or crimp it onto the uh, blue white on the back of the stereo don't worry if there's a bunch on there just solder in with all the other ones it's just meant to turn on the amplifiers uh, so it doesn't actually power the amplifier it just powers a relay to say hey it's time to turn on yo so at this point, um, as you can see here, I've taped them all together. It makes it so much easier. And now I'm going to see how I'm going to feed it through the dash and how I'm going to pop out the trim, which will be super easy. So just give me a sec here. Hey, guys. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're under here is you'll see two little black screw-offs. Um, put them on here somewhere. Or I might have put them up top. What they are is they're two little, you'll feel for them, they're, and you just unscrew them. They're finger tighteners. Once you loosen them, You'll see this little piece right here will come right off. As you can see, this is where they sit on it. So once you loosen them off, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to take out a Phillips screw that's in the back right here. There's only one of them. So you just take that out, and then you slowly work this down. And then when you get to here, just pull down. As you can see, they just it kind of hooks in up there with this clip right here. There probably should be more than one, I'd be guessing. But, um, again, I'm not the first owner of this model, so... Once we get in here, now I'm going to see if I can fish up there to the stereo. It gives me lots of room in here. I don't like to come out and through here or go up there. We might be able to go up there. I'm just going to see which way I can. And we also have this hook here, which I might be able to use for wiring. And then I'm thinking what I'm going to end up having to do, actually, is I might go into the subfloor here a little bit and go under and in here. The reason why, no rattle. The cushioning will protect the wires and we'll put it up here far back so that way it's away from people's feet. And then when you get up to this part, it's just lifting. It feels like like that. And and then this will probably lift off a little bit. We'll take a look at that, but we'll get this out of the way. And look, now we got a trough to run our wires. Actually, this one even looks like it's just a pull-out too. Look at that. This is actually missing a clip. <laughs> there should definitely be a clip right here. So I'm going to probably have to go invest in some new clips to keep this side together. But yeah, as you can see here, now we have a perfect trough into here. And look at that, a wire trough, which we're not going to use because I don't know how much of that is power wire. So I'll still take a look, see if I can make some sense of going down and through here. 
All right, guys, so this next part was really easy. Shoved my arm all the way in, deep behind the stereo. I'll show you here. I just reached down like so, but I was sitting on the floor, so then I went in from right there, put my hand in through here, reached up with the other hand, and I started feeding the RCAs in. The Ted's just literally dropped down right there, so I grabbed them and I pulled them through. So now I've got my RCAs run under that metal because I don't want anything to catch on any metal. So I went down, around through here, and then I just weaved it around like I said I was gonna show you or do. I did that just under this black piece. You have to weave it up, down through here. As you can see, my wires are right there. And up and around and over here, and now they're right here. Now we gotta get this big, long plastic piece off. So as I seen, I just lift it up on here. It lifts it up a little here. Then you gotta come over here. Grab your back seat. Grab, rip up, like really hard on both sides. If you have two people, it's easier. Once you do, you push down on the back and then lift on the bottom and you just slowly lift it. If you take a look, there's this uh, hook here. You have to lift it up and over or back and then over the hook and then off. And then you'll see that there is another one on that side and you have two people basically doing that. And then you see this right here, the, your, the metal things stay on this seat. These are just wedged in there. So now after this is free, you take this out. Now you're gonna need a 10 mil bolt or it looks like a 10 mil, it might be like a seven or eight. I'll have to check that out. You loosen this off. Then you pull this down and right in here you'll see a plastic cover. You wedge your panel pop in there, pop it off, take out that Torix. So once you get there, take that off, then it's just slowly pulling this piece back and working it out of here. Okay, and as you can see there's clips there. So I'm gonna work this out the rest of the way. Stay tuned. So you know how there is that Torx that was right there in the top end of the cubby right there? Well, inside the cubby hole, if you look inside of it, you'll see another Torx. So you're gonna have to loosen that one off. And that'll be, like I said, inside the cubby in the back. See how there's a little tab on the inside? Yeah, there's a Torx in there. So, after you remove that, now we can finally get down to the nitty gritty stuff and start loosening this off. Now this should pull out the bottom, ha ha, just like that. And we're just gonna do that on both sides. And after you do that, uh, this will just work its way out. Just be careful, you don't want that to flex too much. I'm trying to be careful right here. And then, out, just like that. And actually this can just sit right up here. We don't need to take it right out. And then from here, see all this spongy area down here? I think I'm just gonna run it inside here. I don't know how much of this trough I wanna follow, but if I can get it to get close to it, but not in the trough, that's what I'm gonna do. But yeah, now we got a path all the way to the back seat, which will run our wires under the back seat and then out into here into the spare tire well. Super easy. I'll show you once I'm done. So as you can see, what I did is I brought my wires down into here and then up over here, connected remote, connected uh, RCAs, and I'm not connecting the remote on this one because I actually am not going to be wiring in the four channel yet. I just wanted to get the RCAs back here so they're not hanging around in my house. <laughs> I just want, so now those are in here. Now all I've got to do is one door at a time. I'm going to be uh, doing each door for those, so that's later on. And then now, of course, it's time to run the power wires. And of course, if you're wondering, what about your sub, man? There's my sub. She eats a lot of power, so. And then, as you can see here, I cut apart the uh, tray there so I could box in my amps, and then plus I put these to space out so that if something heavy's on there, it's not gonna, one, it won't buckle the wood, and two, it keeps ventilation. Now to space it, I used Velcro, because as you can see, I hoard Velcro. I love Velcro for putting stuff like this on, and uh, all I did is I took it, and it, see, it acts like a cushion, and it keeps it a little bit of an air gap. So there you go, that's it so far, and uh, now what do we need to do? Well. Follow what I did over there. Um, I put that side all back together so that way I don't mix up parts. Now it's time to do what I did over there to this side. So two bolts up here like I showed you before, one right there, and then we're gonna pull up and unbuckle this stuff. And then we're gonna go right here and uh, pull this part out, which again, this yeah, this doesn't have any screws. So once you get this out, then we will work this plastic piece out. 
And if you have a DSG, like I do, the cool thing is here, you have a clutch plate for if you would have had a clutch in the body. And I'll be showing you that down below, but that's where we're going to run our power wire. And what that'll allow you to do is it's just a big uh, rubber plastic piece, so that way you can uh, cut two holes or put two grommets in it. It's up to you. It's actually rubber, so you don't have to put there put that there. What I usually do is I'll run my power wires and then I'll run a bead of silicone around both of them to make it weather tight if you really want to. And then we'll bring it up to our battery box which is pretty simple. It's just right here. I'm not, I don't usually keep the battery tray and of course we've already got some terminals here so I'll just loosen those off, put our two positives on here and then we'll have to run to put some fuses. So stay tuned and I'll show you each step. All right, guys, so if you take a look here, I'm just under the dash. And then if you go right underneath, this is where I'm going to be going through. Now, the problem is, is probably not everyone can go through here because, again, I have the DSG model. But see how there's this little square? You just lift up on it. And uh, then I'll cover my light. But you can see this a little plastic thing. Just grab it with your fingers. Let's see if I can there. This is a clutch plate. So this is exactly where I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to cut some holes in this or puncture it and then I'm going to pull some wire through here and that's where it's going to go. It's going to go up and in there and I should be able to get two four gauge wire holes. Now if you're doing this, you're going to want to look around a little more. Sometimes there's another grommet in here. You just want to find a grommet. If you cannot find a grommet, the only problem is, is then you have to drill through the firewall and let's see here or see this there's one more see this boot right in here right beside the clutch plate that there's a wiring harness going through here so you might be able to get up and through there uh, what I'll usually do is don't poke a screwdriver or something but if you got something like hard plastic you could do with the screwdriver just be so careful if you gouge one wire you're done but this plastic grommet here you could probably puncture a hole in and then pull the wiring up and through there I'm not gonna do that way because obviously I have a clutch plate but if you're only running one speaker wire it's perfect because we're not speaker wire I'm just poking it with my finger and I'm almost putting my finger through it so if I were you if you have um, the clutch version of the car go through the wiring harness right next to it and just go very carefully through it you'll feel that it's a very soft rubber okay so stay tuned and I'm gonna put some holes inside this clutch plate cover all right guys so as you can see here we got tons of wire here I've even got more than what I'm gonna probably need but I want more because I'm gonna have to do some stuff uh, up here for the fuses um, I'm gonna do something with the battery box so you'll see that afterwards but uh, how I got them up here is when I was looking through that window, which once you have the plug out, you'll see it, there's like a crevasse there. And if you aim for it with the wires, like you'll look through it and it's like you'll see the light from coming from uh, up here. And all I did is I forced the wire up and it slid right up the firewall and I just pulled it out. Super easy to do. You don't even need to fish it. So once you get that there, then what I did, I didn't even pull this part out, not worth it. Tuck the wire up and in and here, put both power wires coming down here. With you, you only need one, but I'm going to be running, as you know, two amps, so I've got both of them here. And then this comes down here, over to here. And I've already showed you how to take the trim off a million times. So once you get here, now we got our power wires. Now, once I get it back here, I'm just going to have to etch out my foam. I'm going to see which way I want to come with this, and then I'll make it happen. But, uh, yep, so stay tuned for that, and I'll show you how we're going to mount the fuses. I'm going to have here, I have a 150 amp, and I have a 60 amp, and the one of them will be fine with a 60 amp, and the other one's going to get the 150 amp. But the wire itself is rated for 2,000 watts, so I have nothing that's going to be exceeding 2,000 watts. I have a 1,600 watt RMS amp, which will never go past RMS because I don't need that much base in here. And then I've got a 1,000 watt amp right here, which is for my um, the door speakers for when I wire those up. So door speakers, like I said, are going to be a different project. Right now, it's just getting the power done. And then after that, I'm just going to find myself a good ground. All right, guys, so as you can see, I've wired in my fuses. I'm going to be uh, 
doing a little bit of, I'm gonna use some industrial strength Velcro here, because I wanna put these here, but I want to be able to pull them out of the way, so that way if I have to get into my battery cover, like so, I still can. And then there's this little opening in the back, so that's why I have it looped up. But I'm gonna put them up here, but yeah. So I'm gonna put them on this battery terminal. I just have them off right now, because I'm gonna tighten them on afterwards. As you can see here, be super easy. I've got a washer I'm going to put on there too because I want to make sure that it holds both of them and they're nice and tight and it'll go right on this loop which is perfect on the VW as it is and then of course I already ran my wire which was super easy just kept it on the inside here all the way up and right here and after it got over here I just connected it in and connected it in and then I did a ground now if you look at right here if you I'm going to line my hand up right here. If you look under your car, you're going to see a frame piece that runs right here. All I did is I drilled my grounds into the frame. Cool thing for you, if you're doing two amps, make sure you ground them on the same point and it's a good ground. Make sure you clean it off. What I use is, I call it witch's pubes and it's right here. They're cheap. You can go pick it up. It's just... I have a metal cleaning brush. Some people use them for cleaning battery terminal posts, but I usually do this, and then you just put it on top of the, the see how it's a grayish metal? You want to make that shiny, so you just use this, and you go like that, shines that metal right up, and then that's where you put your ground to. And it's a, I, the only reason I'm not pulling this off is I just got this back down, and I have it bolted under here. So it's just a screw down onto both of them, and it's pinching it up against the metal, and I felt to grab the frame, so I know I'm good. Um, so now it's the really fun. Oh, and I've already connected up my subwoofer as you can see here. Got my speaker wires going in. And then once I put the platform on, I'll slide my sub up and over the platform. And like I said, um, that box is so bloody heavy. I don't have to worry about it really rolling around. I might think of another way of securing it in a little bit here, but I'm going to make it so that way if I need to rip it out, I can. You know, maybe camping or if maybe I need to get out my spare, I want to be able to do that instantly. So. Yeah. Anyways, I hope this video helped you out with wiring up your sub. I mean, the only thing left now is to just clean up the wiring and put everything back together. And that's basically watching this video in reverse. So, other than that, hope it uh, helped you out. Press the like button if it did and subscribe for more videos.